Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic today is process validation with specific focus on worst case selection. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. If you're new, make sure you subscribe to get all the good content we're putting out. Check out the status bar below for our agenda and stick around to the end for those bonus questions. Our topic, worst case selection, is linked directly to the process validation requirements, and we find those in the standard at section 7.5.6 and in 820 at 820.75. Worst case selection in five words, most challenging attribute to validate. When we perform process validation, normally there is no way we can validate all of the various products and product combinations that may go through our process. The processes I want you to think about here are cleaning processes, sterilization processes, passivation, heat treat, any of these various processes where they are going to be covering a large scope of products when we actually utilize those processes later. This is when we get into worst case selection. And normally what we're looking at for a worst case is we're looking at the most challenging aspects for that process given the specific product. Things that we need to consider are surface area, volume, mating surfaces, materials of construction, say glass versus plastic versus organics versus metals. Then we get into microbiological counts, so bio burdens. We look at permeability and we also look at residuals. There are other things that we may have to consider when we look at process challenge devices or worst case selections. The whole goal here is to select one or two products, maybe more, a small grouping of products that represent the most challenging aspects for us to use during the process validation. If this very challenging device is able to go through the process and the validation is successful, well then all of the other devices are covered by default because of our challenge device. Sometimes we have international standards that help us identify these process challenge devices. I want you here to think of sterilization processes. Take for example, if you manufacture medical device kits. You may have the most challenging kit you make may have 10 items in it. So in order to build a process challenge device, you may design a kit that has 50 items in it. This kit would never be sold, but this kit has all of the most difficult items for your sterilization process in the kit. If you do the process validation with this challenge device and it passes, all of your other kits are easily going to go through that sterilization process and be fine. So how do I know this is working? Well, first, the rationale for my worst case selection is documented. Second, the rationale for my worst case selection, it covers all of the important aspects for that process and that product, all the most challenging aspects for both ones. And in third, my validation is successful when I utilize these challenge devices, these worst case selections. How do I know it's not working? I don't have a worst case selection and I still only test a small subset of my entire product portfolio. Second, I miss important challenging aspects of my validation. One time, I was working with sterilization of kits and we had a glass syringe inside our kit and it was going through ethylene oxide sterilization. The ethylene oxide is not able to travel through the glass. So we could not show that the inside of that syringe was sterile unless we took the cap off of the syringe. So we had to make a design change in order to allow that challenge point, the glass would not allow the ethylene oxide to permeate it to ensure that the sterilization process was effective. And then finally, my rationale for my worst case is captured and documented within my QMS. And now for those three bonus questions. First, do we have sterile product? If yes, do we utilize process challenge devices? Second, how would we determine worst case product or for the process we're intending to validate? And then finally, where would we capture the rationale for our worst case selection? Where would that rationale be documented? Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Send any questions to me at qms.jedi at gmail.com.
This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained. Making quality systems simple for you.